Lately it seems like a deep dark night. But follow me, follow me outside. Tonight we have Doug Hammond returning for his second part of the series, along with our host John Baylor. I'm Ryan Meir, and back we go into the moonlight. Thank you for joining us for Moonlight. We got our second episode here tonight with Doug Hammond, and uh, we've had a good time on here so far. Heard some very nice music, um, and we tried to focus on the guitar playing of Doug Hammond last time around. And I want to dig into into songwriting. You said you you started playing guitar at 12 years old, I think is what you said. And you mentioned a few artists who kind of got you on that track, um, but I, I wonder when when along your musical journey you decided that you wanted to be the guy who writes the songs? Uh, I think I had always wanted that. I just didn't, for a long time, know that I had a voice to use, um, and I, I still question that sometimes. Um, but I think at some point, you, you just have to go with it. I think if if you're somebody who's bound to write songs, then they're stuck in there and they need to get out, um, or else, I don't know, I guess you have to go to the ER or something and have them removed. But uh, at, at some point, it just comes out, and you can't stop that so I think when I was around 18 19 um it was a very wayward point in my life um I think I had to find that full outlet not just instrumentally but lyrically and vocally to to kind of get some of those things out mm -hmm. so you say always and always is a surprisingly hard word to define I think uh, does that mean like at, at 12 years old that's sort of what you wanted or does that mean long before then that was something that you wanted uh I think I think as a kid and, and going up to when I first started playing the guitar, I think subconsciously I always wanted that because I, I did idolize those people, those Cat Stevens, Gordon Lightfoot. I, I wanted to have what they had. I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to create that kind of art. So I think I think all along I had really wanted that, and I think it just became a reality when I couldn't keep it back anymore. Yeah. So what what's the breaking point? 18 or 19 years old, what is it that, that now's the time I'm going to try my hand at it? Um, my teenage years were a little bit wishy-washy. Um, my mother had a struggle with cancer for three or four years um, when I was in my preteen, early teens, and she finally succumbed to it when I was 16 and she was 50. So my father lived in South Carolina at that point, so my options were to go somewhere I was completely unfamiliar with as far as going to school or anything like that or stay home. So I had some family friends that took me in. Um, and then I ended up staying with some other family friends. But as I got a little bit older and there were less rains on me because I, I didn't have a parent really keeping a watch on me and they could only do, the people who were watching me could only do so much to kind of rein that teenage mm -hmm. angst in. Yeah. I, I did a lot of floating around. Um, they're just going back and forth between various friends' houses. Um, I, I had a minivan that I would keep a box of toiletries in because I would end up somewhere different. Um, not not anything bad like drugs or anything, but I, I was very wayward. I had not really much direction. Mm -hmm. So I think that all kind of culminated into kind of the outpouring of, of lyrics and songs, um, was trying to figure out who I was or who I was becoming when I was very much, I was a mama's boy up until she was gone, and then I didn't quite know what to do with yeah, myself. Right. Um, did that experience define what music is for you in any way? I think a lot of it did, yeah. Um, I think, I think I felt like her love for music kind of was dispersed then when she died, and it was, it was something that became even more important to me at that point. It was, it was something I could take with and keep moving forward with. Mm -hmm. And you, you have said that you 
maybe for 15 years you've been riding on and off. So sometimes you, you feel that urge uh, or that need, whichever, whichever way you want to define it. And, <coughs> and then some other times you don't. Um, what, what's, what's the, what are some of the reasons why you've gotten back into songwriting? Um, there's always the urge and the need for me. My problem is uh, the, the, lack of, the lack of spring, the lack of something to attach it to. Um, I, I go through a lot of long dry spells. Um, and, and I've been in retail since I was 19, so there were trying points in my career where I was a salaried manager and away from home way more than I was at home. So the time I could get at home, I wanted to spend with my family, and it, it wasn't really a time where I could seclude myself and write songs. I just wanted to bask in their presence. Um, so that's, you know, it's it's always something I want to do and like to do. Um, getting it to actually come out is a lot of times the harder part, like, the, the pandemic, you see all these people on YouTube and stuff like, oh, I wrote this and this while I was shut in. I, they suck. <laughs> I wish I had had some kind of creative spring while I, while everybody shut in, but I really haven't had much. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the lack of a spark to get a song going sometimes. Right. Um, you, I, I think you were planning on uh, um, taking in the night as a, the first song to play for us in this set, and. Um, I'll, I'll give you the chance to to say what you will about it. When I, I read through the lyrics that you sent me on this song, I thought this is this is probably not about a son and a mother, but there are a lot of elements in there that that spoke. I thought to that that mother child love, mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess I'll just let you run run with it from there and say what you will, and then then let us hear the song. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's a that's a song that I had wanted to write for a long time. I think I had that first line, "If I'm taken in the night, if my dreams get far away," for years before I was able to attach it to anything. Um, and really, what it's what it's about to me is, um, on one level, it's a bond between two people. Um, and what really cemented finishing the song was uh, my wife's grandmother had passed. Her grandfather had passed years before that, and they were they were just that couple that was so reliant on each other that mm -hmm. it it was really the emotion of having that other half of you torn away um what what i feel like will be one day when one or the other of of us goes is that the other one is going to be left very much very much hurting and very much wanting in a big hole um and yeah the other part of it is wanting to accept when the end does come um i think that was a big question for me when my mother did pass and then when my father passed were they ready for it? Were they able to accept it? Because I've never been able to get my head around accepting death. It's always been something that I'm very selfishly afraid of. And so I, I want to be able to, at the end, say, you know, I'm tired. Let, let me just go to sleep or, you know, it's, it's okay if I go. Um, so, yeah, I think for me that song goes on both levels. Um, but, yeah, definitely it's, uh, it speaks to a relationship on the, on the topmost layer of not having that partner that you've had for so mm -hmm. long. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead and let us hear it. <clears throat> If I am taken in the night If my dreams get far away Will you sing me lullabies Just to help me on my way softly in my ears all the things you want to say words of joy and love and fear 
weave them tightly so they'll stay These bonds will never break My faith will never shake I'll be lying there in wait Knowing you'll join me someday songs we used to sing I close my eyes and take a break let your hair fall in my face so one last time I can feel again Tired, let me rest My heart is weary and it aches Put your picture in my vest Where I'm going I will take it will never break My faith will never shake I'll be lying there and wait Knowing you'll join me someday to help me on my way beautiful good song there's um thank you sounds like there's a a, a a lot that feeds into something a lot of different uh um emotions and experiences in life that uh that mother and child thing that i said i saw in there and i i, I kind of felt like this this wasn't really a song about a, a man and his wife but um all the references to to dreams and lullabies and in the sense that someone has passed but but you're going to take something of that person with you um i'll, I'll kind of put that in my mind but also this sense that something that we're looking for in love is comfort in those difficult times and like that that uh even even the married man and in, in his um you know in his marriage with his wife there's still um I guess you would say the child inside that that has pains that's looking for comfort. Yeah, definitely. You have a lot of um 
a lot of your vulnerability, um, a lot of your weakness or uncertainty um, come through in your music. And it, it seems like that's, that's the point of a lot of your music. Why, why is it important for you to explore that in music? Uh, I'm not sure that it's necessarily important for me. It's just kind of what comes out a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not until I, I write a whole row of songs and I look back and I'm like, oh, five out of six of these are kind of yeah. depressing. I'm like, oh. And that's another, another thing that I would like to hone my songwriting because I do, I have a lot of things to say. I just, particular things come out and there are other ideas that I would like. Like I said, that song took me years to actually get to fruition. I had the idea, but I couldn't craft it into something. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things like that for me. I, I think I just fall to a deep vault, and then sometimes things come out easier that way, but they end up being the, the more woe is me category, yeah. um, as opposed to some of the other ideas and things that I, I would like to write about sometimes. So if you get that idea, and it takes several years to turn it into something, what's happening with it, the idea in those several years? Uh, it's marinating, I like to think. Um, I, uh, for me, the music comes first, and a lot of times I'll have a line floating around in my head that I have to slap onto a chord progression or something to give it life, to make it sentient. Um, so a lot of times, yeah, I, I would say my music is built out of spare parts. It's progressions and licks and lyrics that I have just kind of sitting in a closet somewhere that I'll eventually cobble together when I find the right amalgamation of them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the lyric, I think, is just kind of waiting for the right time to strike and waiting for the right thing to attach itself to to where I can actually sit down and let the song write itself. Mm -hmm. You say a uh, very interesting language uh, when you say it, it, it becomes sentient. It, mm -hmm. it attaches itself and now it's, 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 it has a life of its own and like a soul and a mind of its own. And in the last episode, um, you said you were, you were co-writing the song with that idea, so in both of those, it's like this idea is a, is another person that you're you're working together with it in order to come up with something. Um, where does where does that other person come from? Uh, I I guess it would be subconscious, sub what you want to actually say or can't kind of figure out how to get out. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of songwriters through the years kind of equate it to being channeled or being downloaded or mm -hmm. you know um, all sorts of different phrasing for it. But it seems like everybody is kind of uh, kind of possessed by songwriting it, yeah. it kind of happens to them they don't necessarily make it happen um they're just sort of a vessel for that to come through um so yeah i, I definitely think it's it's kind of a lot of unconscious things coming out right well the the the, the way you phrase it like i say I've, I've had this conversation with a lot of people and i don't i don't ever get that uh that idea that this is another person another being and and we're we're mutually working together um so i i don't i I would I would say don't don't run away to that field of downloading uh, <laughs> the idea or whatever, but 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 keep with that because that's a um, just a, a very fascinating metaphor to describe that process, um, and and when you say it's also like it's something that comes out of the subconscious and it's that's that's something that feels like a, like a personality that's somewhere inside yeah. of you and that the language that you use. Um, kind of conveys that very idea. Yeah, I mean, and it doesn't always feel like that in the moment for me. Like if I'm sitting there writing in a notebook, if I'm I've got got the fever for it, and I'm like, oh, I got to get this out. It's it's usually like a week later, a month later, a year later when I look back, and I'm like, I wrote that, huh? I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, or or maybe it it feels like this is something a different person would have yeah would have written definitely. Um, now, also in having this kind of conversation, um, the idea of audience has come up quite a bit, and, and the reason I phrase this this way is because I, I think, again, I'm going to get a different answer out of you than I do out of, out of some of the other performers. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, when you're writing music, how important is it for you to have an audience to share it with? I think on a base level, I'm a very selfish person, so the audience is typically me um, or mm -hmm. my family. Um, but it, audience is important to me in the way that I would like to touch other people the way that my heroes were able to touch me through music that mm -hmm. I had never met them, but their songs could bring me to an emotional state that, that was something deeper that was able right. to get through a bass layer. So like, if I can hit someone like that with a song, then I, I would love to. Um, that's, that does make audience pretty important for me. I mean, and I think 
I think anybody who's a, a performer needs that validation of having an audience. And um, but yeah, it's it's secondary to me, but it is important. Mm -hmm. um, like the idea that that changing the world starts with changing yourself. Um, sure, it'd be great <laughs> to reach out and touch other people, do something meaningful for them. But what matters the most is that you're doing something that's meaningful for you. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we better get another song in here because you got another one lined up. We don't want to run out of time for it. All right. Um, this is uh, Higher Ground. You want to tell us a little bit about this song? Yeah, this is uh, this is not necessarily one of those woe is me songs. <laughs> it's a little more recent, um, trying to take a little more positive spin on things. Um, and it's really about personal growth, um, kind of looking back at where I was when I started my songwriting journey or my adult life um, and a lot of the things that have kind of help me grow up a little bit and be where I can sit and have a conversation on a stage without my heart beating so visibly that you can see it on the camera. Um, a lot of things about songwriting and stage fright and just living in general. Um, so it's, it's about trying to climb to that, to that higher peak of, of being and trying mm -hmm. to improve oneself and being able to evaluate that I indeed have made this progress. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and take it away. <laughs>
fighting like My hands were bound But I think I'm just turned around to to understand who we are to figure out what our identity is and I feel like I see that a lot in your music um, this song and the one that you open the first episode with are both songs that are asking this question who am I and what am I trying to do what should I be trying to do in this life and they to me they don't sound like they're songs about music at all and both of those songs that that are asking those uh, foundational questions for you those are both songs about music and this one's growth as a musician um so i i just find that interesting i, I do you do you see music as playing that role as defining who you are a way to understand yourself i think i want it to be the defining aspect of me if i if i leave a mark on the world um then i want that to be i mean Everybody has that one thing they want to be in life, I think. Yeah, whether they know what exactly that is or not. But, like, my my big end all is to create music and be able to make music. And that's, I want that left behind. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I think I think music does play a very defining role in my life. Um, e even uh, aside from the uh, the question of, of how will you be remembered or what is your legacy, um, I mean, in reality, music isn't everything that you are, but but it seems like it's still the most important thing that you use to to ask that question: Who am I, and and what am I pursuing in life? Um, I'll take a look at uh, just a, a couple of lyrics from this song here. Um, maybe I'm not who I was before. Maybe I know to ask for more. I'll jump down a little bit. Um, Maybe living ain't just a chore. Maybe it's worth keeping score. And again, like that first song in the first episode, um, it, it sounds like it's a song about, about growth or about transformation. And all these have been songs about identity and songs about weaknesses, but, but growth and transformation is also um, very central to, to the songs that you shared with us. Um, is Is that... Um, is that a goal that you bring to your music when you're writing a song? Like, I, I want to spread this message to people or, or to myself. Um, yeah, I think I think conveying anything really is is the point of songwriting in general. For me, it's it's very cathartic. It's it's self medication. Um, kind of being able to lay those thoughts and convey something to myself that maybe I don't quite understand on the base level of just thinking about it, but to turn it and bend it and make it something else. I can maybe find the idea more palatable and and I like the idea that maybe somebody else along the journey could find the idea more palatable or be able to deal with something too by by my interpretation of my own feelings. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you uh, uh, again for sharing your music with us and and um, bringing up all those questions everything that you that you wrestle through when you're putting a song out there for the world. Um, all that weakness and all the the uncertainty and the questions about yourself those are those are the things that human beings wrestle with and and music like this I think just helps us to do that um, helps us to find answers to those very same questions so thank you for uh, for your songwriting thanks for the playing um, just beautiful work all around oh, thank you thank you yeah. for the opportunity and uh, in a couple of weeks we're gonna have Patty Schaffner join us uh, a songwriter that will be on the stage with us so tune in that's the uh second week of october and uh and then we'll also say a big thanks to our sponsors um thank you to the encore performing arts for um for joining us and helping out with this program and always a big thank you to gibson insurance and the gibson foundation and to all the friends of the moon as well if you are interested in supporting what we do here check out the wild rose moon website um look up the friends of the moon and uh, we'd love to have your support <laughs>
will be back. We got to mention the people behind the scenes that make all this possible. In addition to our sponsors, George Stricker, John Baylor, Howard Gibbs, Matt Bergmoser, Jennifer Reed. I'm Ryan Meir. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Did a great job tonight. See you in the next episode of Moonlight. Moonlight.